been racking up the miles. I've been dodging women trying to hold you down. Listen, I'll be honest, they get kind of wild. Throwing parties in my section when I'm out of town. I know, I know I used to run the streets, baby. I was out there trying to hustle, making sure that we could eat, baby. I did my dirt, but now I'm clean, lady. We fit together like a puzzle, ain't nobody else for me, baby. Let me come through. I can do what nobody else do for you. Let me prove everything I gotta prove. Go and make a move, you know I'ma act a fool for you. I'ma ride for you, ride or run, baby. Oh, and I don't wanna let you go. No. Even though I know you ain't always good for me. Oh, 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 oh. I don't wanna let you go. No. I'm still, still feeling to love you. I'm still, still feeling to trust you. I'm still. Good morning and welcome to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 107, speaking of the Lord, He sent forth His word and healed them. Today, God sends forth His word for us through the scriptures, through the message, through the songs, we pray that the Lord's word will bring healing and hope to those who are weary, those who are hurting, those who are troubled in mind, body, or soul. May God bless our worship this morning. Let's begin. To the one that gives us all the blessings, Starting with the offer of forgiveness for the many things that we do that fall short of His glory. We do not deserve You, Lord. We do not deserve Your promises. We do not deserve this life with You. But we are so grateful. Help us to sing to You. Come, Thou Fountain, every blessing. My heart.
is my home. Oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy coats above. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a Savior, our children of God, you're willing to adopt us. We're so, so grateful. We thank you. And all God's people said, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We speak responsibly, Psalm 130. Out of the depths. I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, 
O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. That you may be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord. More than watchman for the morning. More than watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love. And with him is plentiful redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Glory, Glory be, be to, the, to Father, the Father, and to, and the, to the Son, and, and to the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it as was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now and, and will, will be, be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, your Son Jesus triumphed over the Prince of Demons and freed us from bondage to sin. Help us to stand firm against every assault of Satan. Enable us always to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what has been written, I believe, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that the grace extends to more and more people it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is only is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Those of you who joined us for worship last Sunday know that one of the hymns we sang was It Is Well With My Soul. This has always been a fun hymn for me to sing. I've always enjoyed it, but I never knew where it came from or much about that story behind the hymn. Well, now I do. I looked it up, and It Is Well With My Soul was written by Horatio Spafford. Horatio was a lawyer who lived in Chicago. He was very successful, and in the spring of 1871, he invested in real estate in Chicago. Well, in October of 1871, that was the date of the great fire in Chicago, and almost all of his investments were burned up. But Horatio carried on. Two years later, he and his family were planning a trip to Europe. It was he, his wife, and his four daughters. Well, his investments, he was still trying to work on recovering something, uh, rebuilding from the fire, uh, kept him in Chicago. He wasn't able to travel with his wife and his daughters. So they went off on a steamship, but the ship was hit by another boat, an iron boat, and it sank, killing about 226 people, including all four of Horatio's daughters. His wife survived, but none of his daughters did. Well, Horatio wrapped up his business and hurried to catch another boat and go across the sea to, to comfort his wife. And on the way, 
uh, this voyage when he was mourning his daughters is when he wrote that beloved hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. If you look at the first verse of the hymn, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Even in his darkest despair, in his grief over his daughters, and even with losing uh, so much of his investments, that mattered, of course, to Horatio, but it didn't uh, cause him to forsake God. In fact, Horatio took comfort from God from knowing that it was well with his soul. Paul talks about the same thing in 2 Corinthians. He writes, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inner, inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Day by day through our trials, day by day through our troubles, through our sickness, through our our breakups, through our financial problems, through our illnesses, God is with us. He is renewing us day by day. But the passage from 2 Corinthians goes on. For our light and momentary troubles are achieved for us, are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is not on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So God is comforting us day by day, but even better, he is telling us in our next life, we will join him in heaven. We won't have the troubles, we won't have the trials and tribulations. It will be all joy, all love, all peace, all glory with him. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us day by day and helping us deal with our troubles here on earth. But thank you even more for sending your son to die for our sins so that we can join you eternally in heaven and have no more troubles and no more trials. Thank you that we can all say, it is well with my soul. We declare our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All the many blessings for all the many promises we want to bless you back bless the lord oh my soul
my time has come still my soul will sing your praise Receive our worship, receive our praise, Lord, from a thankful, grateful, joyful heart for all you promise us. <laughs> we cannot thank you enough. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd gathered again so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebub, and by the prince of demons he casts out the demons. And he called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man, and whoever blasphemes they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said he has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mo mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dearly loved and precious children of God, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today follows on the heels of last Sunday's text from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4 and the first verse of chapter 5, where we hear St. Paul write, For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is our text. For as long as I can remember, I've enjoyed camping. 
my earliest experiences with camping was as a young boy with the Boy Scouts. Believe me, that was a long time ago. And the camping equipment we used in those days, well, frankly, it was primitive even then. My first scout masters, Bob Senninger and Ken Luden, would pull out these old canvas tents out of storage that looked like they had been through a war zone. But we took those old tents up into the north woods of Wisconsin and we did some real wilderness camping without even realizing that's what we were doing. Some of the best life lessons I ever learned, I learned from those wilderness camping experiences with the scouts. Then once I grew up and got married and we had children, our family did a lot of camping. It was cheap and it was fun. We started tent camping with five small children and we enjoyed the beauty and the freedom of the outdoors. It was a wonderful way to spend time together and make lifelong memories. We would pull up over and over again to a spot that was simply an empty site. And within minutes, we would have the tent up and we would be building our home there for a few days like it was our new address. And by the time we took that tent down a few days later, we had made an empty campsite, a warm and happy home with many, many memories. Since those days, camping has become an even bigger industry. Every imaginable camping gadget and gear, stove and spade, tent and tool, is now available in new and improved form. I guess that's just to be expected, right? What was once new gradually becomes old, and what work once worked well enough is replaced by what works even better. When St. Paul wrote the words of our text today, he himself was getting older. I imagine he was thinking about the passage of time and the weaknesses of the earthly body. Last week in the same chapter of 2 Corinthians, we heard Paul use the image of our bodies as jars of clay. Paul wrote, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are those jars of clay, often fragile, brittle, over the passage of time, more chips and cracks along the way. Christ is always the treasure in us. God uses us with all of our chips and cracks to shine the light of his mighty love, of his surpassing power through us to bring the message of good news, of healing and hope and life and peace in Christ to all the world. Today in our reading from 2 Corinthians, Paul moves on from jars of clay to use the illustration of a tent to describe our earthly body. A tent is a temporary dwelling, an impermanent structure. It may be a fancy new tent, and there are plenty of those, or it may be a much used and well-worn tent that has served its purpose faithfully over the years serving people and building wonderful memories. But new or older, it is still a temporary structure all the same. Paul's words are a reminder that our lives on earth are a temporary frame for doing God's kingdom work here, 
uh, bringing healing and hope and life and peace and forgiveness and restoration and renewal and power through the message of Christ crucified and risen for all people. Paul's goal in using this image, as well as the jars of clay and the tent of the earthly body, was to encourage and uplift those who feel that their earthly tent has become a little tattered by time and a little withered by years of use in rough weather. After all, even in the best of circumstances, tent camping has plenty of challenges. If you are tempted to feel a little tattered or worn these days, then listen to Paul say to you, so we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Day by day, by God's grace and through his word, our inner selves are being renewed in Christ. Paul continued, for if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The same root word used here for tent is used by St. John in John's Gospel, the first chapter, verse 14, where the Greek literally reads, the word became flesh and pitched his tent among us. You see, this is the good news of the gospel. Jesus took on human flesh and Jesus assumed a human earthly tent in which to live among us and for us. Jesus assumed the tent of an earthly body in order to live under our place perfectly under God's law to suffer and die the death that we deserve on Calvary's cross for our lawlessness and rebellion, and to rise again in victory over death and the grave in order to be able to promise us with his words, the words of Christ, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me, that where I am, you may be also. Jesus rose from the dead in victory and ascended into heaven to sit at God's right hand, to rule over, protect, and preserve his people on earth, even as he is preparing for us a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This promise does not give us an excuse to give up on this world or to relinquish our temporary but important earthly responsibilities. But it is given to us, this promise of God in Christ, to encourage us and to help us accept the challenges of life in this earthly tent and not lose heart. In the name of Jesus, amen. 
Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen. takes away the sins of the world, we thank you. 
so much, Jesus. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Merciful God, you have sent the promised offspring to crush Satan's head forever by the death of Christ our Savior. As you gave comfort to Adam and Eve, receiving their meager confessions for the sake of your grace, in promising deliverance from sin and its curse, so comfort us by the forgiveness of sins and give us hope in the promise of eternal life in your new creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage to your people, O Lord, that as we believe, so we also would speak of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the confident hope we have in him. Give us boldness by your Spirit to confess this Christian faith from a lively conscience, that for Christ's sake, grace may extend to more and more people and increase thanksgiving to your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, no kingdom divided itself against itself can stand, and a house divided must fall. Graciously preserve our nation and our government. Unite our leaders and our people for the common good, while leading us to hope in that eternal kingdom which is not of this world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Almighty God and gracious Lord, look with mercy on all those whose increasing years bring them weakness, anxiety, distress, or loneliness. Provide them with homes where love and respect and concern and understanding are shown. Grant them willing hearts to accept help and as their strength wanes, increase their faith and their trust in your loving kindness to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Lord God, hear our prayers for your servants who suffer in this earthly tent, including Jeff Wendell, who is hospitalized, and Georgette Pratt, Louise Schnudy, Anna Good, and Calvin, who are recovering. Do not let them lose heart, but fix their eyes beyond what is temporary to the eternal things yet unseen. In their earthly afflictions, prepare for them an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, when at last you will raise us with Jesus and bring us into his presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
have a forever home with you, Jesus. We cannot thank you enough. Amen. I got it blazing, burning all these bridges, misbehaving, going crazy. I've been really out here praying, thinking lately. I ain't acting right, I know the way my mama raised me. I ain't mean no disrespect, I did you bad, mommy. But now I really need you bad, mommy. Lay you down in Puerto Rico in the beach off in the sand, mommy. And you the only one can handle me. Listen, let me come through. I can do what nobody else do for you. Let me prove everything I gotta prove. Go and make a move, you know I'ma act a fool for you.